In an age of electronic engineering, transistors and transformers can often take centre stage, but there's another player in this particular drama, and that's the magnetic amplifier. The unassuming device goes back as far as 1885 in the United States when they were known as saturable reactors and they were used primarily in electrical machinery and in theatre lighting. However, it was during World War II that the Germans used them in their V2 rockets and when the rocket was reconstructed it became used by the US Navy for aircraft. And it's played a significant role in shaping the landscape of electronic control systems. So it's well worth delving into the magnetic amplifier's world, which is a realm where magnetic fields wield influence over electric currents and where subtlety is transformed into its strength. At its essence, the magnetic amplifier is a device that employs the principles of magnetic saturation to control the flow of electrical power. But unlike its semiconductor counterparts, the magnetic amplifier relies on the magnetic properties of its core material to modulate the amplitude of an alternating current. It's a delicate play of magnetic forces that enables precise control without the need for intricate electronic circuits. Imagine a world where electrical signals are manipulated not by silicon chips, but by the nuanced interaction of magnetic fields. The magnetic amplifier with its core of ferromagnetic material takes advantage of the saturation phenomenon, a point where a material can no longer increase its magnetic flux, and this saturation point becomes the pivot point upon which the amplifier turns. One of the magnetic amplifier's most notable traits is its inherent reliability in harsh environments. Free from the vulnerabilities associated with the delicate semiconductor, this device becomes an ideal candidate for applications where ruggedness and durability are paramount. Industries such as aerospace and power distribution have embraced the magnetic amplifier for its robust nature, showing that sometimes the most powerful solutions emerge from simplicity. The magnetic amplifier's prowess lies in its ability to gracefully handle high power applications without succumbing to the heat and fragility associated with certain other electronic components. In power systems, it acts as a silent sentinel, regulating currents with a precision that rivals electronic counterparts. This reliability, coupled with its efficiency in high voltage environment, positions the magnetic amplifier as a stall guardian in the realm of electronic control. Despite its many virtues, the magnetic amplifier hasn't dominated the limelight in the way that semiconductors have. But its relative obscurity is not a testament to its inefficiency, but rather that persistent allure of miniaturization and rapid switching that's offered by electronic devices. Nevertheless, the magnetic amplifier maintains its relevance in specific niches and demonstrates that there are different solutions to the same problem and every device has a new, unique contribution that it can make. These things, they have a weird property that I think is going to be really useful. Now of course they're transformers and they work because you put a current into one of the wires creates a magnetic field, you turn the current off, that field collapses and it drives another current. Now because these are two coils on the same common core, then that current is driven in the other coil. Now the uh, voltage of those currents in ratio to the turns number on the coil. So if there were 10 turns on here and one turn on here and we put 10 volts in there, we get one volt out. Now we all know that, that's how transformers work. Well, there's some really interesting things like about it that, like I say, give it really weird properties. Now, when you let a current collapse, it actually has a resistance to that change. And that resistance of change, it's called inductive reactance, incidentally, is um, one of the fundamental things about this that is super, super interesting. Now, when we have two coils, we have a transformer. When we have one coil and it's just on one core, it's called an inductor. And that reactance is actually what prevents alternate current from passing through an inductor. So an inductor will allow DC current through it, but blocks AC current. It does make you think, how on earth does that work then? Since so it's effectively two inductors, why is it blocked? Well, it is in one of them. 
but the other one isn't actually connected to anything, so the current drives through that, which is why a transformer is very, very useful. Now, let's have a close-up of a couple of experiments to help demonstrate what I mean and where I'm going with this. Okay, so what I've got here is a really simple setup. These, incidentally, are 220 volt transformers. They're 220 volts to 12 volts. And I've just connected one side to the mains and the other side, which is the 12 volt output, to this little lamp. It's a car lamp, actually, so it runs on 12 volts. Now, it's meant to run on DC, but it'll run just fine on its AC. And if I plug that in, no surprise, the lamp lights, which is, you know, what it's supposed to do. And that's using that as a transformer. Now, if I take another one and just take this side of it and we interrupt that. Now, what we've got, obviously, is, an is a transformer with an inductor in series. Because remember, a transformer is basically two inductors, one on top of each other. Now, if I plug that in, how about that? Nothing at all. And it's nothing at all because that inductor is acting as a filter for the AC. If I put DC in there, it just passed through fine. But the alternate current is being blocked by the inductor and the inductive reactants. However, something really cool happens if I just short that wire. The lamp lights again. And you've got to ask yourself, why is that? Because I've shorted the other coil. Well, when it's collapsing, it's actually driving a current in here. And this one being shorted creates a magnetic field still in there. And that magnetic field acts to saturate the core and reduce the inductive reactants. And we can do that, actually, just by putting magnets on. So I've bunged a whole load of magnets. It's created a magnetic field in that core. And because we're reducing that re uh, reactive inductance, we've actually got a bit of light going through. So now some of the AC can pass. And we can pass because this magnetic field is more constant. Now we put enough magnets there to saturate that, then that would light up fully. Now isn't that cool? I'm just a little weird. We can put permanent magnets in there to create a magnetic field, but of course, this coil can be used as an electromagnet. So if we put a DC down here, it would turn the whole coil into an electromagnet and we could use the change in DC voltage to saturate the core and control the AC that's going through there, the AC current. And that has, I think, great potential. Now, of course, we can't actually just do that because um, as it's an AC going through the other side, we would still get the potential of spiking. And this is a, you know, 220 to 12 volt. So if we're spiking that 12 volt AC, we're gonna get 220 on this line. So we have to do something about it. So that we can o we only put the AC, the DC in there and don't have that AC interference. Well, a really cool thing, of course, is that these waves are out of phase with each other. So if we use two of these and we connect them up, then we should be able to cancel out the AC that's been induced by the 12 volts on the other side and only put DC in it. So let's build that circuit. Okay, so that's what it uh, looks like in reality, these three transformers, this being my 12 volt supply and these being my control. Now the circuit looks like this. Okay, so here is it all, all laid out. That's my supply, these are my controlling transformers, there's my light, here's my resistor, and if I twiddle that resistor, I can control the light. Isn't that cool? Now, we're not using this resistor to control the flow of current from the AC side of stuff. What we're doing is using it to control the strength of the magnets that we're creating here, as these are electromagnets. That magnetic field strength is what uh, controls the current going through the uh, lamp, which is why we can brighten and dim it. I mean, that's just awesome. Now, that's the basic circuit. We can improve it really easily, actually, by adding a couple of diodes. And the diode position is shown by this circuit. So here's the circuit laid out. Again, just a jumble of wires transformers, but there's the diodes right there. And we've got the uh, battery connected up. And if I plug that in, then again, we can use this resistor that we've got on the battery to control the current flowing through the AC side of that lamp, changing the lamp's brightness. 
Now this setup actually is called magnetic amplification. And magnetic amplifiers, or mag amps, were uh, seriously important. They were used actually in the V2 rocket because they're really, really stable under harsh conditions, obviously. Now, when I came across this, I thought it was worth sharing because it's one of those areas that stopped being explored when transistors came along. And yet I think that it's one of those areas where there's this really weird behaviour of inductors and transformers that could lead to some really exciting discoveries. Now, uh, there's a guy on the net called Niall Steiner who has a site called... Uh, bang, fizz, buzz, something like that. Anyway, just put Niall Steiner in. Uh, he's done a lot of work on these magnetic amplifiers, including building an audio amplifier without any transistors. I thought that was awesome, and I may actually replicate that. But I thought I'd introduce this idea to you of magnetic amplification. Hopefully it was of interest, and you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.